Hello Internet, this is Sam Messman from We Make Movies here, and today we're going to be talking about some of the FX Factory plugin packages from Noise Industries. I've been using these for a while now, and they've really helped my workflow, and I'm getting projects done within Final Cut 10 a whole lot faster than I used to. So, I figured I'd just go through some of these plugin packages here and give you a sense of how I've been using them, and hopefully you'll find a place for them in your workflows. Just a quick uh, ethics statement here, which is that while I wasn't paid by Noise Industries to do this, I did receive a few plugin packages uh, that they licensed to me for this. Um, however, uh, basically anything that I cover in here, I use on my personal projects and on my clients' projects, and I have absolutely no problem fully endorsing all of the plugins that I've included here. And while I'm aware that there are a ton of high quality plugin manufacturers out there, what I really do like about the FX Factory plugins is how diverse all of their plugin packages are, and also the high quality and level of attention that all of their products seem to get. All of the ones that I've used have exceeded my expectations and have become regular parts of my workflow. Anyway, the first thing you want to do if you want to get some of these is go to the Noise Industry website, which is noiseindustries.com slash fxfactory. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the online store button here. And let's take a look and see the how wide a range of plugins they actually offer. Um, scrolling down, you'll see there's just a ton of different manufacturers. And basically the way this works is they all come in within the FX factory software. And then you have the option of which ones you want to show up within Final Cut. Um, and there's trial versions of everything. You can test them before you buy them. So anyway, uh, what you want to do is click on the Download FX Factory button from the main page there. And it's going to download the software. And then uh, once it's done downloading, you're going to want to open it up. And as you can see, some are highlighted and some are grayed out. And if they're grayed out, it means that they're not currently installed and won't show up in Final Cut. When we go into the preferences, we'll go a little deeper into that. So you can see there's little uh, check mark boxes next to them. These are the ones that I have installed personally. And uh, these are the ones that I use and show up in Final Cut. And all you need to do to enable them is click the check box and they'll come into Final Cut. Also, when you go into rendering, um, you want to check your limit resolution size. I leave mine at 8K because I do a lot of red work. And if I don't have it set there, it's hard for me to work with epic footage. But you can basically render any resolution. That setting's basically there to protect slower computers. So if you have a slower machine, you may want to set it a little bit lower. Um, anyway, let's go ahead. Enough of all this. Let's get into Final Cut. And let me start showing you what some of these things do. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to start off with is what is literally my favorite plugin in all of Final Cut, which is the Naturist Levels and Curves plugin. And I'm a colorist by trade, but the thing of it is, is not every project needs to go into DaVinci Resolve. And the one thing that the Final Cut 10 color correction systems was really missing was access to curves, which if you've used them before, they basically give you more control over your image as you're color correcting and give you a much more pleasing look than what the simple three-way correction can do. And the Naturist Levels and Curves is kind of a bridge between those worlds. And for smaller projects that don't need a ton of uh, changes and alterations to them, the Curves plugin is great. So let me show you how this works. What you're looking at here is a single clip from a podcast that was shot with the Technicolor profile with the 7D camera, which gives a very flat look, which is more suitable for color correction. And when I go into it, the simple Final Cut uh, three-way controls under the Exposure tab, you have the blacks, you have the mids, and you have the whites. And you really only have three ways of modifying the exposure of the image here. And this is where the Curves plugin comes in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to 
go over to my effects browser and drag on the curves plugin onto this first clip here and what you're gonna see is a series of controls that give you access to various ranges along the, your color and luminance channels so for example I'm gonna lower the toe here down to 16 percent and I'm gonna raise the knee up to 86 percent and this basically mimics a typical S-curve adjustment which is a more pleasing contrast adjustment that you would often perform in a program like Resolve and then I would simply click the show curves and those on-screen controls are gonna go away and your grade for the most part is probably about done uh, and you also have a couple presets that you can quickly access which is S-curve or a strong S-curve and usually if you're dealing with uh, technical or profile footage this is all you basically will need to do for the most part on an average clip. Although in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the Final Cut Color Corrector now, and I'm just gonna pop the saturation a little bit, and I've gone, I will have gone from what was an extremely flat grade to, with literally a couple clicks, a basically finished, nice looking grade that I can then copy and paste across multiple clips by using the paste attributes command. So I would push shift command V and then select my color and effects in the curves plugin and now all those corrections are going to easily be applied across all of the clips that I want to apply them to. And the real advantage of all this is that it gives you access to parts of your image which is between the blacks and the mids and the mids and the whites that you wouldn't have access to with the three-way so you can make a more complete grade to your image. Anyway, uh, in this next example there are a couple other filters you have access to and basically what those are is they split the curves filter in half. The first one, the curves luma, gives you access to just the luminance curve of your image so it's not going to affect your individual color channel so as you can see as I'm going up and down my colors are remaining constant however the brightness is being affected and you generally want to use this filter when the regular curves filter is causing your image to become more saturated than you would like it to just use the curves luma instead now the Curves RGB is the opposite of that, where it just gives you access to your individual red, green, and blue color channels. So you would have, in the same way that the regular Curves filter gives you more control over your image, the same can be said with the Curves RGB filter giving you more control over your individual color channels so that you can affect more precise parts of your image. So pretty much, uh, if you're planning on finishing a lot of projects within Final Cut 10, this plugin set is basically a must own. I basically use it for every single project I do. Uh, I can't really recommend it higher. Uh, if I had one suggestion for the FX Factory team for a future release is that I'd love to be able to move the controls horizontally and also be able to add more points if I needed to but those are kind of small things in general this works great for 95 percent of what I need to do and I find myself going to resolve less and less because of it next up is the Tokyo split animator and honestly thank God this thing exists uh, it's made me sigh a whole lot less when a client asks for split screen in a project. Uh, it's kind of incredibly easy to use and the cool thing is they've done a lot of the math for you when it comes to split screen. Um, so taking a look at some of this stuff I'm just kind of hovering over the thumbnails and uh, it's broken down into five or six sections and uh, the A sections give you a full frame split screen image. The B sections give you two thirds frame. The C's give you half size images. The D's one third. And then E and F gives you a diagonal or triangle or this weird shape at the very bottom there and basically using simple math you can decide how you want to lay out beforehand your split screen animations and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through setting up what would normally be a really complicated 
uh, split screen effect using just a few of these and I'm not going to even use a single keyframe and I'll have a fully animated split screen effect when I'm done that will have literally taken me a fraction of the time that it normally would have taken to do this in Final Cut 7 or using the regular Final Cut 10 keyframes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going through each of these four clips and I'm dragging over uh, the split screen effect that I want to place on each one and I'm using the half size frames because it's a little easier for this example um, and I'm using a combination of uh, C1 and C3 plugins and basically as you can see up there one is two-thirds the size of half the frame and one is one-third and now I'm gonna animate these so on the first one and you can tell which one it is because it has the on-screen controls light up in the top third I'm gonna go into my inspector and I'm going to adjust the final position of where I want it to land I'm gonna just want it to land on the bottom left there and then because uh, there's three people in the shot but when I move the outer ring there the scale gives me unwanted black bars I'm gonna crop this down to a two shot and now because they're looking over to their left I'm gonna to want to move this to the other side of the frame so I'm gonna drag the X position slider and actually I'm gonna move it back up to the top so now they are looking at that group of individuals over there and now at the second clip I'm gonna move this over to the right and down so I'm going to drag over the X animation slider and then I'm going to drag over the Y animation slider and that's going to put it in the bottom corner of the frame. Now I'm going to adjust the on-screen controls and center the shot a little bit better using the anchor point in the middle there. And these on-screen controls make it extremely easy to, to modify the picture in picture within a split screen and it just in general makes your life so much easier. With this third clip I'm going to move it down and now I have all four of my clips positioned but if I look at this top one there her head seems a little bit cut off so let me go in and just quickly move that shot within its frame down a little bit and there we go there's a little black space to the top now and we are done we are ready so let's see how this animates on so animating it on it all kind of comes in from the left this seems a little bit weird and um, it's going to animate back off to the left um, this I think we can make this a little bit more interesting so how do we do this well we don't even need to keyframe all we need to do is go back and in the inspector change the arrive and depart directions so let's see how the bottom right hand group shot is animating on when we go into the inspector it says it's arriving from the left we're gonna leave that alone but the shot next to it we're gonna switch over from the left to from right so it's gonna animate on from the right and now with the upper left hand shot we're going to change its arrive direction to from the right and we're going to change its depart direction to the bottom and um, with the last clip or with the bottom left hand clip we're going to change its depart direction to the left and finally we're going to go over to the bottom right hand shot and we're going to change its depart direction to the top now with the upper right hand shot its departure direction is to the left and we're gonna leave that alone for the time being and we should basically have our animation all set I'm gonna render it real quick now there are additional parameters that I'm not gonna cover here for example you can grow and shrink some of um, these you can there's basically all kinds of sliders you can play with but now that this is about done rendering as you can see we've made a complex split screen animation that animates on and animates off using no keyframes and we did it literally in real time with a fraction of the time that it would normally take uh, without having access to these plugins so I'm playing down some other sections that I did actually this is for a short film that I worked on what this is a bit of a montage and um, Pretty much as you can see, 
<laughs> this would have taken forever. This literally, this split screen stuff took me about 15, 20 minutes with the Tokyo Split Animator. And you can get more advanced with some of the stuff by using compound clips and keyframing the position parameters of some of your split screen clips. So this is a sample generator that comes with Final Cut and I've done kind of a fake talk show mock-up with uh, some green screen footage that I turned into compound clips and then placed some of the split screen animators on and pretty much um, split screen is no longer a headache. So I think the value of this plugin at this point basically speaks for itself. All right, next up we've got the FX Factory Pro suite of plugins. Um, this is basically the flagship collection, and for the most part, it's just a supplemental edition of effects, generators, transitions. There's a ton of stuff. I'm not going to cover all of it, but it's mostly just an improvement on a lot of the filters and effects that come with Final Cut. But I am going to touch on a couple that I use regularly. Now I'm scrolling through the generators here and what you're looking at, there's a PDF animator and there's a host of different uh, photo templates. But the one I'm going to focus on is the timecode filter. Strangely enough, the timecode filter that ships with Final Cut 10 is simply not very good. And the one that comes with FX Factory Pro is really customizable and it fills in kind of a gaping hole. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with it and the bottom line is it makes it really simple to customize and send out your edits with timecode. You just place the generator on top of your edit and it's going to produce a counter over the duration of it that you can set to minutes, seconds, frames, etc. Now, I've switched over to the transitions here and there's a ton of different transitions that are basically an addition to the Final Cut transitions and they're also um, switching over to the effects. There's a host of different effects that are included and I'm just gonna scroll down to give you a sense of just how many come with this. But there's one in particular that I am using constantly and uh, I'm gonna show you what that is. It's called the Sharpen Range Filter. And um, this one has saved quite a few shots. When I click over to the shot here, you're going to see a horrendously out of focus shot from a podcast, uh, whoever was shooting this may not have been paying as much attention as they should have. Um, and using the sharpen range filter, what it's gonna do is allow me to bring this more into focus and take an unusable shot and actually make it usable. And I would already applied this, so I'm just gonna click on the preset. But as you can see, turning it on and off, this is now a borderline usable shot. And what this filter does as opposed to the standard Final Cut Sharpen filter is it gives you a lot more control over the area of the image that you're sharpening. And to give you another example, in this next shot, I've applied the same filter and turning it on and off, I've taken a subtly out of focus shot and um, you can see around the face it's kind of blurry and now switching it back on, you'll see this shot is now pretty much perfectly in focus and it's almost like um, it wasn't out of focus to begin with and it actually looks great and this has saved countless amounts of takes that ordinarily would have been unusable and in my opinion this filter alone makes this collection worth the purchase price and now we've arrived at the particle metrics and volumetrics uh, plug-in sets and these allow you to quickly within Final Cut or you can use them in motion allow you to quickly stylize your video and titles with particles and glow effects. Um, the volumetrics focus mostly on titles and it, as you've seen in some of the intro animations to each of the different sections, uh, Basically, they give you a really fast and really customizable way to add production value to your titles. There's a lot of glows and light rays and ghosting and warping that goes into these. And uh, pretty much you just take a sample title and slap one of these on there and suddenly it looks like it took you some time. And the same can be said with particle metrics, except in this case it uses motion's particle systems to do 
fairly complex animations uh, over your footage and they're really customizable. There's a lot of different things you can do to these individual plugins above the standard uh, things. And what I tend to like to do is use these in tandem with each other. So I tend to put um, a volumetrics plugin on text and then I'll put the particle metrics on the video footage. And as you can see in this example, it's going to make a really complicated uh, effect that I was able to do in about five minutes in Final Cut. And uh, for the most part, this is the kind of thing that makes clients happy. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just going to step through what I did here. And basically, it's pretty simple. Uh, I just have two identical text layers that uh, have been duplicated, one on top of the other. In the top one, I just have the drop shadow filter. And in the bottom one, I have a a volumetrics uh, electron flow plugin applied to it and it's been set to only display the effect itself and not the title and um, then I've gone ahead and keyframed it so that it only happens with the animation and this is basically uh, isolated what that electron flow is going to basically be doing underneath the title on the top and I only really modified a couple settings and a couple sliders and just had the animation start and stop where I wanted it to. But, you know, once you get comfortable with these plugins and these settings, it kind of becomes second nature making some more complicated effects. And um, I'm going to move down to the video side. And as you can see, all of these particles like his face is literally er erupting into a series of particles with that effect happening underneath and this took I can't even tell you how little effort this took and really all it involved was using an adjustment layer and basically all that is is a title in motion that I made that is basically an empty title with an alpha channel on it and I use these with the particle metrics plugins because essentially it allows me to adjust the in and out of where I want the filter to start and I'm free to keyframe my other video tracks uh, within its place. If you look in the description, it'll give you a link to a little more in-depth uh, idea of how these work. But basically all I do is I applied the 21st century block uh, particle metrics plug into this pretty much in its standard configuration and it basically just makes this effect it places it over the video and I have my titles animate right over it and in about five minutes I had something that really jazzed up the end of this industrial video that I was doing and it made the client really happy and I didn't even have to leave Final Cut <laughs> Next up, if you find yourself needing to uh, stylize or uh, make some of your video grittier um, or more urban, you may want to check out some of Luca's effects and generator packages. I'm going to start with his light kit and I've got this uh, Times Square city shot, stock shot here that um, using some of uh, Luca's like kit plugins basically you can do all kinds of complicated really stylized effects uh, with pretty much a mouse click and um, these are great I think for music videos and what I'm gonna do is just kind of take you through some of these with the thumbnails and then I'm gonna play a couple back for you with the default settings just to give you a sense of what some of these do you just drag them on they're really customizable and they're actually really high-end uh, things that take advantage of a lot of the uh, filters and effects that come standard in motion that you can just use directly from Final Cut. And scrolling down here, there's pretty much a million of them in this package. And now I'm going to go ahead and step over to the timeline and just play a few back that have been rendered so you can get a sense of what these do. And in this first one, I've got kind of a vignette on the outside. And in the second one, there's more of a uh, flicker lighting effect. In this third one, there's kind of a glow stylized effect. And in the last one, it's kind of a black and white cartoon effect. Um, and pretty much the possibilities with this are effectively limitless. There's um, this, 
when you go into the inspector, you know, there's all kinds of sliders and they're really customizable. Going through here, you know, I can take this black and white clip and pretty much do anything I want to it. Um, and, you know, these are, are, I think, of a much higher quality than the typical stylized look plugins that you would find elsewhere. And in this next clip, I'm going to highlight uh, another package he has, which is his Grunge FX uh, generator package that he has. And when I step in here, um, there's actually two nested compound clips. And uh, he has a host of generators that he gives you access to. And basically on this uh, series of credits, I've used a... Uh, hair and scratches and dirt generator to kind of make this end title sequence a little more interesting and uh, these are all under his grunge effects package like his light kit package there's a million of these to choose from and they're all generators and they're basically if you need to make your footage dirty in kind of a stylized fashion this is probably the plugin package for you but the uh, plugin package from him that I use the most is his Light Leaks package. Uh, playing through this, basically I have turned all of these clips black and white and going into his Light Leaks generator package, you'll see these various different light effects that he's done. And I use these uh, basically to kind of put a different look this is great for music video stuff and it's really highly stylized and uh, what I tend to do with them is I will layer a series of them on top of footage usually that I'll make black and white and um, then I'm going to go into the inspector and I'm going to change the composite mode on them I set all of these to soft light and uh, when I go under these, usually soft light, overlay, hard light, vivid, uh, in that category, or screen above is going to give you a really interesting effect when you change the composite mode and then play them back. Uh, I use these pretty regularly. And lastly, he's got a series of uh, film leader generators that are really pretty interesting. Um, they're called Lucas Film Leaders, and they're also, like his others, really customizable. Um, and there's a lot of them. And, you know, when you click in there, you can go in and adjust the text um, and pretty much get it to say anything you want. And, you know, these are great for horror movies, thrillers, and trailers, and they really add a lot of production value with pretty minimal amounts of effort. <laughs> So what I'll be showing you here is Ripple Training's callouts. Uh, if you're wondering how I've been doing all of those pointers and magnifications and stuff, I've been doing it with this series of plugins that Ripple Training designed, and they're really easy and really intuitive to use. So let me give you a quick demo. Basically, the first thing I'm going to do is let's add a magnification to this project here. And uh, I'm going to extend that out. And then to get it to come up, all you need to do is click on it. And you'll see that little anchor point in the center that you can drag up. I'm going to drag that so that the end is centered. But the problem is that I need to have the magnification for this go down a little bit so that I can see this a little better. So I just drag the magnification slider and get the end centered to where I want. Now I'm going to adjust the ring and the border so that it is a little more pleasing to the eye and I simply drag the anchor point done. I'm going to turn off the blur background because I want to see the thumbs up and that's it. That's all there is to it. Couldn't be easier. And next I'm going to add a little pointer just to give a little emphasis to what we just magnified and these are incredibly easy to use as well. Um, as you see, you have the option to have some text on there. We're going to delete the text uh, in this example. And now I'm going to change the shape of the arrow by dragging that endpoint in. And I'm going to drag it down to rotate the arrow. And now I'm going to move it over with that middle control point there. And as you can see, we're now pointing at ripple callouts with an arrow. It took about 10 seconds. Um, 
Lastly, we're going to add a checkbox and finish this up. Uh, a little green checkbox that's going to go uh, to complete the animation. And this is incredibly easy to use as well. You'll see it appear in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to drag that control point to reposition it. And now I'm going to change the size and reposition it again to the bottom right hand corner. I'm also going to delete this text because we don't need that either. And let's switch back over to the title pane and let's increase the scale of the checkbox um, to get it to a size that we want. And now let's go ahead and reposition it to the bottom right hand corner. Uh, and that seems about right. Let's move the Y axis down and there we go. Now let's quickly change the color over to a green checkbox and as you can see like the other plugins this pretty much couldn't be easier so finally let's go ahead and play back the animation and there's our magnification our arrow and our green checkbox they all fade up and on pretty seamlessly and we are done anyway I hope you guys really got something out of this and uh, you see how useful some of these plugins can be they really contribute to their workflow I think plugins have come a really long way in the last couple of years and now for me at least are a critical part of my workflow as I go through projects and they're allowing me to get through edits way faster and have them look so much nicer and if you watch this and it all went totally over your head or you just don't feel like doing it, well, this is what I do for a living. So feel free to hire me either to consult on your movie or to finish your film for you if that's what you need. So if you want to get in touch, just drop me an email over at sam at wemakemovies.org. And lastly, if you're wondering what this whole We Make Movies thing is, check us out over at wemakemovies.org. Or if you live in L.A. or Toronto, sign up for our newsletter and then come to one of our events. I'll see you guys next time. And cut! <laughs>